Get ready for another host at home, Adam's Archives. Welcome to Animal Crack Ups. I'm Alan Thick, and today we've got everything from the birds and the bees to the chimpanzees. And people, too. She has condensed nine to five into a half hour of fun, Sally Strether. Here's that bookworm who's always at the head of the class, Dan Frischman. And the starlet of Punky Brewster, Soleil Moon Fry. This guy made all pro five times and all handsome three times. L.A. Raider, Todd Christensen. Now for the real stars of our show, the animals. She got the show with respect for the wilderness. The love you give is the love you get for animals. Just like people do. They love the families as much as me. These are called naked rats, folks. Yes, I've been called worse. These are uh, genetically bred this way by some bald scientist with a grudge. Uh, look very closely. You'll see that uh, they have no hair and they're blushing about it. This one's a little, a little red. They make great pets. They're very clean. They're very fertile. Uh, and you got them? No, he's fine. They're friendly. I said great pets. They have a gestation period of only 22 days. Now, you can wait that long well, no for a wonder. pizza. Pick them up so, uh, oh, yeah. no. when they have litters, they have about a dozen little rats. You could start your own talent agency. We'll just uh, find you a nice little pair of pants and a sweater and turn you over to Debbie Bartlett. Where's Debbie? Our... <laughs> we don't want to... She's not a rat lady, right? That wouldn't be... There you go. Yes, they're just lovely little creatures. You have two others? I have one in my ear now, so speak up. <laughs> How do you feel about bees? Uh, what do you know about bees? You probably know that you have to behave near a beehive, or you better beware you're behind. Have I got rid of all of them now? <laughs> Let's see how many of you get an A in our bee quiz. Did you know that a bee colony can house 80,000 bees with just one queen ruling over them? That's no hive jive. Did you also know that the queen, her royal bee-ness, can lay up to 1,500 eggs per day? Let's see Princess Di do that. This is a wasp. He's many times larger than the bee, but the honeybees outnumber him, and their job is to protect that hive and protect their queen. When a bee loses its stinger, he dies. Fortunately, about 60,000 of them can live in a man-made bee colony like this. Let me tell you that bees like their climate control, somewhere between 60 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when the temperature inside that hive gets too hot, exactly how do they cool down the hive, Clive? That's your question. We'll be starting with Todd Christensen. A lot of people may not see, but they have their own little sweat glands. That's where they cool themselves down. They have their own little sweat glands. Very <laughs> inventive, yes. All right, Soleil, like a... are you buying that? I don't really know about it, but I I don't know. Maybe you put something on the top of the box. Or... I don't know. They I really go out to ice. They go down the hall in the little bee hotel, and they use the machine. No. Okay. They have been endowed by their creator with these wonderful things called wings, which are like little miniature fans, and they all bat them, you know, very, very fast, and it cools off the hive. And that you wouldn't worry that they would fly away by batting them. Well, they hold on very tight with all those old feet. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with Sally here. I say they 
flap their wings very, very rapidly. You know, I get the whole thing. Done. Okay. Well, you've uh, all heard of worker bees. They're also the air conditioning bees, and here's how they do it. The workers stand at the hive entrance and they buzz their wings, creating a cooling breeze. Now, with the help of this special John Madden diagram, we can see the formation of a bee line outside the hive. There's a lot of honey in there, too, about 50 pounds in this hive alone. Well done, Sally and Dan. You might notice Debbie handing out these furry little hedgehogs. That's the way she is, and we love her for it. She'll do that for every correct answer, and the guest with the most correct answers earns $2,500 for a favorite animal charity. Now, what has a hairy chest and an incredible sweet tooth? Maybe your father? Hopefully not your mother, but definitely the chimpanzee. And you'll meet some champion chimps after these words. original poem. <clears throat> buzz, buzz, buzz is the sound that's clear. When a bee's making honey, that's what I hear. Buzz, buzz, buzz is the way bees sing. When I hear that song, I run from the sting. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, an apple a day keeps the bird at play. After these messages, we'll be right back. I should drink milk, because it'll help me grow up big and strong. Milk's got stuff that's good for my bones and stuff that's good for my muscles. And I guess that's okay, but I'm more interested in having fun. That's what makes milk so neat. You can drink a lot of it, and it tastes cool, so it can be a real pick-me-up. Milk, it does the body good. All aboard for breakfast with my Crunchberry cereal. That's, That's us. Captain's very sweetest berry. Time to make tracks with those sweet, tasty Crunchberries. Oh, no, the soggies. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Captain. Yep, things should be turning around any time now. The Crunchberry Express, right on schedule. Yeah. Thanks for giving us a hand, Captain. My special Crunchberries are a very sweet part of the balanced breakfast. We now return to Animal Crackers. All right, Todd, the football season's over. I want you to imagine now that you're uh, on vacation and you're in the jungles of South America. Would you expect to bump into a chimpanzee there? Chimpanzee in South America? Well, I, I always assume that they come from Africa and Asia, but uh, I guess for the sake of argument, I'll say yes. <laughs> oh, well. well, that's the end of the first half, but the score, nothing for Todd. No, the answer is as close as the nearest map here was. If you do find a chimp in South America, do him a favor and put him on a plane home. He's lost. Chimps are only found in Africa. <laughs> so we've learned something here today. All right, this is for Soleil. When a mother chimp has babies, how many babies does she usually give birth to? One, two, or three? Um, one? Yeah! Right. Yeah. 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 Right. That was a baby bell. Let's check out the chimp daycare center here. Let's count baby chimpanzees. There's one. Okay, you can stop counting now because mom only gives birth to one at a time. She carried that baby for about eight months in her womb, and then for the next six months, she carries it on her front, like this. When the baby's a little bigger, Mom carries it piggyback style for maybe a couple years until he gets a bus pass. <laughs> there you go, Sally. <laughs> All right, now, Sally, if you're silly enough to get a chimp mad at you, and don't ever do that, but if you did, would he be more likely to beat his chest or stomp his feet? Uh, or just if exhale. It, if it's like. a male chimp, beat his chest. Oh. Oh. Would what you, do I know? Will you go for stomping right. feet? Take a look at a cheesed off chimp. Keep your eye on the big guy here. I don't know why he's angry. He's got something to eat, but he's in no mood to share, so he stomps his foot, which in chimp language means buzz off. Still got that old chimp rhythm, though. And a one. 
Very nice. Stomping the foot. All right, Dan, when a chimp retires for the evening, is he more likely to crawl into a cave or climb into a nest? Well, uh... <laughs> uh, I'd say he climbs into a nest. Get up. Beat his chest, Sally. Beat his chest. All right, where does a chimp crash? Watch. <laughs> He's more likely to climb into a nest. Chimps make a new nest from branches almost every night, and since they love practical jokes, every now and then you'll find one short sheeting the tree. Here you go, Dan. some surprising, amazing, delightful footage of pygmy chimps. And I'll be surprised if you're not amazed and delighted, too. These are the jungles of Africa, the only place in the world you can find chimps in the wild. And today, a big day. Tryouts for the chimp cheerleading squad. <laughs> Practicing that pyramid you love to see at halftime. Coach knows that grooming is important. Looking good. These are sugarcane workers being carefully watched by the pygmy chimps. Chimps are waiting for the workers to leave. The way to a chimp's heart is through his sweet tooth. They just love sugarcane. So they wait patiently, or not so patiently. And as soon as the coast is clear, they move in, collecting the leftover pieces. Oh, boy, there ought to be enough sugar here for about 300 candy bars, about uh, 4,000 pies, about 8 million cavities. Oh, kids everywhere love their sweets, and Junior here is cuckoo for cane. You wonder, don't these parents try to straighten the kids out? I mean, that much sugar isn't good for anybody. At least it didn't stunt their growth. An average male, in spite of being called a pygmy chip, stands about three feet tall and weighs in at around 80 pounds. Well, you gotta admit, for the kids, this sure beats strained peas and liver. <laughs> Mom insists they brush after every crop. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when this happens? You go to a picnic and shoot. Come on, come on, get out of here. I'll pull out the bug spray on you. These chimps don't want to share with wasps. They don't even want to share with each other. Oh, come on, just give me a handful. Yeah, give me a footful. I'm not giving you my sugar cane. Take a size 12 in the mouth. Well, finally back with the family. Mother says, enough is enough, and tries to wrestle that piece of cane away from Junior. It's enough sugar for today. Come on, give me the hand it over. I'll give you some just thank you. Now, what's this? Why are they sounding the chimpanzee alarm? Is this just a sugar rush from all those sweets? No, it's an intruder chimp from another tribe trying to rob that candy store. It's a call to arms. And chimps have long arms. This one grabs onto a large branch and rushes to the attack. Meanwhile, Mother Chimp can't believe her good fortune. With all the distraction, nobody noticed the thief has dropped his booty. He left sugar free. He scoops it up and with baby on board, heads back into the jungle. With the danger gone, the rest of the troop follows her lead. And after gathering the leftovers, they head back for a full night of flossing and praying that the tooth fairy will be gentle. You might know that the chimpanzee is a primate and so is the gorilla, the orangutan and the monkey, but one of them is not in the same group of animals. Which one? Gorilla? Orangutan, chimpanzee, or monkey? Which one does not belong here? Todd is playing for the Sacramento Zoological Society. Sally for the actors and others for animals. We'll be starting with Soleil. Um, I'd say monkey, because the other ones are so big. I, I don't know. Um, Picked a monkey, monkey and you related that to size. All right, Sally? Um, I'd say a chimpanzee just because um, Michael Jackson carries one around, so it's got to be in a family all of its own. Yeah. <laughs> that makes, makes it different. Yeah. Gets to go on world tours. Yeah. Bubbles. The Except in chimp. South America, where Todd will never bump into one. <laughs> Dan. I also said a chimpanzee, mainly because, well, because Sally did, basically. <laughs> and, uh, and I really have no idea, but it just did. Okay. Safe way to go. All right, Todd. Well, it seemed to me that the only uh, movie 
for which uh, they're famous as Planet of the Apes. And since they had their own movie, I assume that they probably have their own family. So I said, Gorilla. All right. Some difference of opinion. Let's turn to page one in our primate primer and see just what separates one from the rest. This is a gorilla. This is a big gorilla. A gorilla is an ape, and apes don't have tails, and this gorilla is polite enough to demonstrate that. Here's an orangutan with a stylish goatee. From this angle, we see he too is tailless. Another ape. Ape number three, our friend the pygmy chimp and son. Pygmy chimp junior. Still no tail. That means, that's right, another ape. But wait, up in the sky, it's a tail, and that means it's a monkey, not an ape. That, my friends, is the major physical difference between apes and monkeys. Monkeys have tails, apes don't. So they got it. So it's not, uh, it's not really the size, although it's the size of the tail, because there's no tail in the other case, and tail is the difference. So the, 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 the soleil was close enough. She didn't have to know the reason. We'll be back with some animals that eat like birds. Because they are birds. They're birds of a feather in lousy weather. And they're coming up. Reggie the Hedgie here with a letter from Christy Knight of Denison, Texas, who says she'd like to become a veterinarian. But for now, she helps her dad raise Indo-Brazil cows and American red brahmins. Look at those long, droopy ears, the big humps on their backs, and the extra skin on their necks. Looks like they could use a tuck or two. <laughs> Thanks for writing, Christy. After these messages, we'll be right back. Ah, uh, about gobbledygook. What's its face? What you would call it? Whatever it is, whatever it was. Chocolatey chocolate. What you would call it? How's it go? Wows and do. Chew gooey caramel. What you would call it? Do you You know what I mean. Peanutty crispy. morning I saw a sign that said come see local spelling bee. I said what a country. Even insects go to school. The fun fact is bees have five eyes. If you see a lot of bees in your backyard don't do anything to make them cry. You might cause a flood. <laughs> this trip's a breeze thanks to my super golden crisp cereal riding high with 10 vitamins and minerals and the honey sweet part of this nutritious breakfast. Something shady going on here. Yeah, and my beak digs your honey sweet wheat sugar bear. Dig this bird brain. All you're getting is a vitamin packed punch. It looks like this turkey's goose is cooked. Can't get enough of super golden crisp. It's got the crunch with punch. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't easy getting even more delicious chocolate into something as rich in chocolate as a Three Musketeers bar. Fortunately, it's a lot easier to get all that extra chocolate out of it. Ta-da! On the next weekend special... A puzzle? Only you can solve! A male witch is set free! Where are you from? Not so. With evil magic powers that only a good witch can stop. There's no way out. It's Miss Switch to the rescue. Now we return to Animal Crackups. A 
present fun for after dance? You know, I was wondering when you're going to ask me that, Alan. Uh, I did once at a, at a, at a party, and uh, I made a real fool of myself because it was very tough. The apples were still on the tree. Oh, and, uh, well, I'll, I'll be. Uh, well, if, uh, yeah, it's easier than bobbing for uh, pumpkins or porcupines. There are some animals in adverse conditions who are happy to bob for whatever is bobbo. What? This might be a winter wonderland to us, but to many animals, winter means one thing, food shortage. Now, some learn to adjust their diet and eat whatever's available, like we do when our kids beat us to the fridge. The squirrel digs up previously hidden goodies. Let's have a gander at the eating habits of a couple birds that decided to brave it up. By the way, the gander isn't one of them. This guy would be eating insects in summer. In winter, he's not so picky. Our man-made apple tree looks kind of pathetic, but this bird's not about to look a gift apple in the mouth. This bird's trying some vitamin C. Helps us fight off the cold. He's saying, hey, why don't you just send me to Florida? I can pick my own. A lemon? Well, they like citrus fruits, but well, you can't sing with a puckered beak. But these are hard times. And getting worse. An onion? No, no, no. It gives me heartburn and bad bird breath. How about a little cheese platter? No crackers? Well, now let's get back to the apple. This time, we make it a little tougher to get at. Here's an old family recipe, apple on a string. He swoops down and drills it. He could eat a bushel with a peck. Maybe looking for a worm. Protein. Some people like bobbing for apples. Some like hovering for apples. Is the chickadee clever enough to get this nut? Walnut on a string. No problem for him. Although it is a little awkward eating upside down like this, you try hanging onto your dining room table by your feet. Not only do you have trouble digesting, you'll have trouble finding dinner guests. Here's some filet of walnut, deshelled, delicious and delightful. It shouldn't be too tough. This should be a piece of cake, except it's a piece of walnut. He is going to eat that walnut meat, but we want to know how. Yes. How oh, will the chickadee get the walnut meat? That's the mystery. Will he peck it from midair? Will he sit on it and peck it? Will he pull up that string and peck it? That's the question. Write down your answers. Soleil is playing for the ASPCA. Dan for the Performing Animal Welfare Society. And we'll begin with Sally. Well, <clears throat> he looks like he was tired from his last round with the walnut with the shell. So at this point, I think he's ready to sit down and take it easy. Right side up, I would imagine. Just sit on it. <laughs> sit on it, yeah. Dan? I also agree with Sally, mainly because, well, because she said it, too. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> no, I don't know, I, I just think, I like to say the phrase. I just wanted to say it on television. Sit on it, so. <laughs> Feel good? <laughs> Todd? Would that I could be original, but unfortunately, Joni said it to Richie many times. Sit on it. <laughs> and Soleil? You believe I put sit on it also, and I don't think it would be pull up the string, because why wouldn't he have done it all those other times? I don't know. I don't know. But well, remember that was a, there was a big heavy apple on it one. Oh, yeah. I don't think everybody just likes to say sit on it. We have that kind of a group today. So uh, hover and peck, sit and peck, pull and peck. A bushel and a peck, Gregory Peck, who knows? Pecking is definitely involved. And for the impeccable truth, we'll roll tape now. We have walnut, we have string, we have chickadee. Do we have lunch? Well, here's what happens, my chickadee chums. He pulls up on that string until the walnut comes to him. Chickadee may be small, but chickadee is no chump. Pecks away with that built-in nutcracker. And this will be quite a feast, because that walnut will feed him for about two days. And then just hang on, my friends. Summer's right around the corner. Don't you all feel silly now? You notice how quickly they take off their little cards and put them down behind them when they don't get it right. Grab yourself a pencil and paper, and I'll tell you about a contest when we come back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Dinosaurs, come on! Capture the dinosaurs. Don't drop the stop the dinosaurs. It's the dinosaur hunt. Chef Boyardee, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs from Chef Boyardee. Tasty, wholesome.
some pasta, that's a dinosaur hunt. Cause first one to capture all three dinosaur shapes wins. And dinosaurs with meatballs. I hope we can find the score, Miss Blizzard. Don't worry. Look out. Wow. Mm. Know what we need to get us going? Hot Nestle, quick. Come on. Chocolatey, rich and creamy. That's because you make it with milk. Ah, now we're ready to get going. Look. Ah. He wants our quick. Ooh, ooh. How do we find the school? Hot Nestle, quick. The taste that gets you going. We're having a blast at the beach. That's why we're into Beach Blast Barbie. Beach Blast Barbie is setting all the trends. Beach Blast Barbie is the one with all the friends. She's in the clip on hair that turns pink in the sun. Wow. Beach Blast Barbie, you're the one. We're into Barbie. We're into Barbie. Beach Blast Barbie doll and friends. Beach party set and buggy each sold separately. You put accessories together. New from Mattel. Territorial and possessive. You know, that's my tree. No, it's my tree. That's my rock. You can't have it. It's my beach. It's my towel. It's my girlfriend. Get your own. They sound just like us. This might look like a peaceful beach, but life is never tranquil for a crab. This one comes up to catch some rays. And before you know it, he's about to be ambushed by another crab. Makes you wonder why can't they take out their aggression the way humans do? Maybe with a game of football. Yeah, let's try blocking. All right, you ready? Good hit, good, 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 good hit. All right, now huddle up, everybody. Here's what I want you to do. You go deep about 15 yards, right? Yeah, then you go out to the left. Then you're going to cut inside. I'm going to get the ball to you. Ready? Okay. Motion. Ready, set, hut one, hut two. Touchdown. That was for you, Tom. Good play. A good play. Well, uh, I'd love to give you one of these, but uh, you yeah, had them right today. Uh, yes, no, and well, that's all right. That's uh, Soleil did two, and Dan did two, and they each get one of these from the World Wildlife Fund collection. More importantly, twenty-five hundred dollars gets split between the ASPCA and the Performing Animal Welfare Society. Thanks to these two, here's something special for you folks at home. You can win a stuffed animal like the ones awarded on our show. To enter, mail as many separate postcards as you like to Animal Crackups. Include your name, address, and phone number. Five different winners will be selected from all postcards received in a monthly random drawing by the first of the month. All postcards are eligible for one drawing period only, and all cards not selected will be destroyed. Good luck. Thank you folks for being with us. Remember, you be the kind who's kind to animals, okay? Bye-bye. Well, that's it for the Congratulations to all our winners in the January drawing for the five stuffed animals in the World Wildlife Fund collection. Leanne Hoover, Dan Metzger, Matthew Watson, Gregory Wang, and Stacy Bailey. Tomorrow, it's a bewitching and bedazzling Disney classic. Angela Lansbury stars in bed knobs and broomsticks. Wednesday, Maggie and Jason's 20th anniversary party becomes an even bigger surprise for all the guests on Growing Pains. Then nobody puts on a show like the kids on Head of the Class. And now stay tuned for Miss Switch to the Rescue, the ABC Weekend Special, next. This is ABC.